Hello, welcome to this uh, virtual reality environment from the Crumfield Safety and Accident Investigation Centre here at Crumfield University. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a Eurostar accident site that we've set up and we're going to talk about some of the dangers and pitfalls that there are on the site and the kind of evidence that we want to collect when we're going around the site. So chronologically, straight, straight away we're going to be looking at the aircraft and looking at any dangers that are for us. From this position here, as you can see, if you look, a, look across at the site, you can see that there appears to be a body there. There's what appears to be blood at this stage. And so I'm going to start wearing PPE accordingly, personal protective equipment, so that it can protect me against things like HIV, hepatitis B and C that are prevalent within bloodborne, which are bloodborne pathogens that are prevalent within blood. Also, I can see that the aircraft is in a state of disrepair. It looks like it's settled onto the ground quite nicely. Many areas have broken off and there are a lot of sharp edges there, which I'd also be concerned about when I'm walking around. If I was to have to touch these or move them and manipulate them in any way, I'd wear some thick gloves that would make sure that I don't cut myself possibly even gauntlets that would cover my wrists and anything and possibly even um, a paper soup if there was a fire and there was particulates blowing around the site. So the first thing we're going to look at chronologically is the aircraft has come in from behind us possibly it looks like at this stage but be aware that the aircraft can cartwheel and, and change orientation and it can be a bit deceiving where it's going to be. In that instance, if it has cartwheeled and the wings have hit the ground and gone over, what we're going to find is ground marks. So what we want to do is look around, see if there are any ground marks that would indicate where the aircraft has come from. And the first thing we see is three nice marks on the ground here, where it appears something has struck the ground on this. Knowing that this is an aircraft with three wheels, I can generally ascertain that this is going to be the two wheels that are situated underneath the wing on a Eurostar and that's going to be the nose wheel where it's impacted coming in. The aircraft has then come to rest over there and got into a, a very severe state of disrepair. But the first thing I'm going to be looking at is grey marks such as these to, to start telling me the story of what has happened with this aircraft. Moving forward, just because I found some grey marks, that doesn't mean that that's the end of, of what I'm looking for. Any grey marks, we're going to keep looking. And here, quite difficult to see, but you can see some strike patterns in the ground. And these can indicate they've started to dry out, so that it can give you an idea of the amount of time that, that has gone by with these. But this is likely to be the propeller. The propeller starts off making slices in the ground quite close together and they get further apart which would indicate to me that either the aircraft was not under power or didn't have a lot of torque going through the engine and so these the propeller has slowed down as it's hit the ground rather than trying to power through the depth can affect that even if you've got torque if these are quite deep they're probably going to slow the propeller down anyway but it gives you an idea of the whole accident sequence. So you've got the wheels making a mark on the ground there, propeller has hit here, and then we've got the accident site in front of us here with various various pieces of the puzzle that we're gonna be talking about as we go around. So, as we come in, we're looking at the aircraft, trying to ascertain, is everything there? Is there anything missing? So from here, I can see the tailplane, I can see the fin, I can't see the rudder for the fin, so that's something that I'm going to be looking for on the site or possibly further afield. This may have been integral to the accident and may have come off quite a while ago. So I'm going to make, I'm going to be looking around, looking around the site to see where that is and that's something that I'm going to be looking for. I can see both the wheels, I can see the engine, I can see the battery. The battery across the way is disconnected and we'll walk over to that and have a quick look shortly. 
Also, I'm going to be considering the site itself. I can see that the propeller on the far end and the battery are actually outside this inner cordon. I'd probably want to move my cordon out to encompass those so that anyone that, that was coming on the site would not penetrate this inner cordon without, without my say so as an accident investigator. So I can see both the wings, I can see various damage that's happened to the wings which may give me an indication of, of the mode in which this aircraft has failed and come to be in the position that it's in right now. Other things I'm looking at, I'm looking for any perishable evidence, things like, as we can see down here on the ground, we've got a smartphone, a great source of data, always going to be collecting location data. It may have been used as a, as a supplementary nav aid. I'm going to want to get that out of the rain, out of the weathers, weather environment, and get it away to be dried out if it is wet and try and get the data off that using Cellbrite or a similar similar sort of program to interrogate it. We've also got the um, laptop over here. So the laptop switched off, probably not collecting location data, probably not gonna give you much, but what that will give you is a gold mine of human factors elements that you might wanna, it might, might be integral to the background to this accident. Was this a work trip? Was this a pleasure trip? What was going on? We've also got a camera over here. This camera, if he was on his holidays, we can see what he was doing. Was it was the pilot out drinking? Was he staying up late? Was he opera? Was he working? You know, the camera, the the photographs on that camera are normally time stamped on a digital camera, and that's going to be a great great item for us to look through and get some some rich sources of data so we have the the pilot himself who's the victim what we're going to do here is we're going to maintain the dignity of the body what we want to do is cover it over so that anyone that decides to look in through the fence or send a drone up or have a look at what we're doing they're not going to see anything and it's not going to end up in any newspaper or social medias Obviously, there's a lot of blood over there, so we want to be careful of that. We don't want to be um, contaminating ourselves with that, so you're going to wear the correct PPE for that. Other areas we've got, we've got a memory stick again, along with a laptop. That's, that's going to be interesting information about what was, what, was, what was happening prior to this. It may be of relevance or not. Uh, fire extinguisher can be a hazard. In an accident such as this, there's likely to be damage to that pressurised vessel and therefore it's something that we want to, you know, make sure is okay. It's not, it's not going to explode on us as we're wandering around the site. We've got the prop, we're missing the other end of the prop and we'd be looking for that. Where is, where is that? Is it embedded in the ground, in those ground marks? Has it, has it disintegrated? Was it there when the accident came in? Possibly. You know, a missing prop could have been a, a significant factor in the accident. And interestingly, we can see the battery has quite helpfully disconnected itself. Because of the weight and the position of the battery, a high energy um, impact such as this is likely to throw the battery out and the engine. The heavier items have more potential energy and therefore get float, thrown forward. And so you're likely to see these further out. What that tells us is that this site has got the power system removed. If there is only one power system on the aircraft in, in question. So the final few things as we come around, we can see the canopy has been removed. That's a bit unusual for this incident, possibly removed by the emergency services. We're going to need to ascertain wh where that, what happened with that from interviews or from secondary sources just to confirm what we've got. On the ground here, we can see a needle. That doesn't necessarily mean that the pilot was taking drugs or anything like that. This could have been used by the emergency services in a life-saving manner. They will normally bend the, bend the needle to prevent reuse. But what we want to do is make sure we get that in a sharps box, in a evidence bag, so that it's not, uh, it's not going to maintain a hazard for everyone. We don't know 
the condition of this pilot and this blood could be full of bloodborne pathogens that we don't want to be contaminating ourselves or anyone that that might handle the site with and the final thing I'm going to talk about is the ballistic recovery system or these often fire out sideways which is which is um, often many people think that the the parachute will fire out vertically which makes perfect sense however we've got the fin behind here having a parachute firing out vertically there is a snagging issue here so many of them fire out sideways if this is still live it's a massive dangerous danger for you because there's a big slug in here that is under explosive uh, that has an explosive that will fire it out and then pull the parachute out and if you're in the way of it that can create severe injury or even death so that was a quick whistle stop tour around uh, an accident site. We've talked about a lot of hazards, we've talked about a lot of evidence, we've talked about how we are building our picture. The key takeaway is that there's a lot of evidence here, a lot of stuff that we're going to look into uh, and we're going to analyse in more detail later. Accidents were never, are never solved on the accident site itself. The most important thing is to document this site collect all that evidence whether it be perishable or just mechanical that we want to check out switch positions things like that we're going to take those photos so that we've got the site documented and then when we take it when we go off the site we can recreate it in a more benign environment in a hangar so as I say that was quite a quick tour but um, it was just a taster for you guys I hope you've enjoyed wandering through our virtual reality environment with myself and um, I'd like to say a, a thanks, for, thanks for watching from the Crumfield Safety and Accident Investigations Centre at Crumfield. Thanks very much and goodbye.